Hey everybody, this is Alan. Welcome. It's Thursday and I am going to give you my opinion on how to set up a rail on a compact platform. Uh, this is for anybody who's got a rail they don't know what to do with or anybody who's got a big bulky setup that they want to shrink a little bit. This is for you. And why don't you come about 10 feet closer so you can see what I'm doing. I'll do, I'll play the music thing and then you come closer. So I was finishing up putting together this platform so that I could start my testing properly. I've been doing some testing, but it's been on a very temporary platform. And I wanted to do some more uh, rigorous stuff, so I was building a platform to use, and it occurred to me that maybe you would want to see what I was doing. So I was just getting ready to go out and paint it, um, but I thought I'd show you while the stuff wasn't painted so you could see what I did. I'm gonna take you through everything that I do to build a, a, a horizontal platform. And I'm gonna show you why I do everything that I do. Now, whether or not you want to do any of that is entirely up to you. Uh, I mean, there are plenty of folks that just bolt their, their rail to, to a piece of wood or don't even do that. They just leave it sitting on the table and use it that way. Um, I think your photographs will get better if you uh, build it uh, a little bit more carefully. And I think your experience of using a rail will be very much better if you take into account a few of the things that I'm going to show you. Now, admittedly, I, I go just a little overboard with the details uh, because I, I use the rigs that I build, you know, all day, every day, and I don't want rubbish. So I, I don't want them falling apart or anything like that. So probably I do more than you need to, but still it's, it'll be useful for you to hear the decisions. Now, before I get to that, I'm betting that you're thinking, well, it would be nice if we got more frequent updates on what's going on with the Wii Macro. I agree, it would be nice. So why don't you come to the live stream on Tuesday night at eight o'clock? Because everybody who wants to know what's going on with Wii Macro comes to that and I tell them, it's a bonus for coming. I even drag all of this stuff back to the other part of the studio so that it's there waiting for you. And I go over everything live and show you what I'm doing and what's coming up and so on. So come on Tuesday and there's an extra special reason for you to come on Tuesdays for the next few weeks. Let me tell you about something. You know, there is a speaker that I'm going to be uh, interviewing. She's a photographer of slime molds and funguses or fungi even. Her name's Alison Pollock and she's world famous and she wins awards and prizes for being such a good photographer. Now, she is coming on for this interview and we're going to do it live so that her fans can ask her questions. And she has fans more places than I do because she has a lot more fans than I do. So they would naturally be spread out more. And anyway, she's got fans everywhere and they're all going to be clamoring to get in. Uh, as will you, and there are only a hundred seats. And these seats are so exclusive, they don't even come with a chair for you to sit on. They're seats without a chair. You have to bring your own chair. But it's a Zoom thing. So, you know, you get a ticket and then you use your ultra secret code to get into the meeting. And when you're in the meeting, you can actually raise your hand and ask Alison questions. There are only 100 tickets and they are going to be uh, divvied up using some kind of lottery thing that I haven't figured out yet. It's too complicated, but I will. On the way out the door tonight, I snatched a few tickets. I probably shouldn't have done, but I did. And um, I am going to give two tickets away every Tuesday night at the live stream. I'll probably ask a difficult question or a trick question probably and uh, then the people who answer it right will get their ticket and they'll get to come in it's like a Willy Wonka thing only without the children dying it'll just be a, a, a good way for you to get your ticket so that you can relax and laugh at all the people who don't have tickets if you want a seat and you have a chair that you can bring then come on Tuesday anyway should we get started with today are you going to be there on Tuesday let me see you pinky swear and then I'll start.
Okay, all right. So what I wanted was a platform that was solid, compact, not prone to vibration, yet easy to put in my very limited space. That's what compact means though, isn't it? You caught me on that one. I was trying to make it another thing. Versatile. It has to be versatile. I'm always changing stuff. So I need to be able to change my rig in a minute, not in an hour of, of digging around for screwdrivers and what have you. So there are a lot of quick release devices in, in my setup. Now, I'm not going to show it today, but I also need to be able to go from horizontal to vertical very quickly. And because the rig that I'm going to be using is going vertical. I wanted to build it in such a way that I wouldn't have to modify it. For example, I don't like using bellows vertically. I know some people do. I don't. There's too many moving parts. Uh, there are too many single points of failure is what I'm trying to say, where a, a, a screw goes bad and the whole thing will come crashing to the, to the table. So uh, yeah, so I, I go with a, a more rigid, fixed type of system that uses tubes when I'm going to be using it vertically. Today is the basic get you started rig. And without any further ado, this is in the order that I built it, the, the order that I did things. And it's not a DIY video because I'm not going to make you watch me saw or drill or anything like that. It's just ridiculously boring. We'll deal with this in a minute. Though this is something that needs to be built pretty early uh, in the, in the um, process. The base is a piece of wood. Now, in this case, it's actually like four pieces of wood. I grabbed all the wood that I had that was bigger than this so that I could cut it to this size. And I only I had three or four pieces. I would gladly have made it this thick, like a butcher block. The heavier it is, and the more um, ply there are, the more layers of wood, the less likely it is to warp or bend or do anything funky and it'll hold the weight. Heavier it is, the less likely it is to vibrate. Now, I didn't even use the same kind of wood. I used plywood on top, cheap flooring plywood in the middle and particle board on the bottom. Why not? And I don't even have a table saw so uh, what I did was I just stacked all my wood up together and then clamped it together and then used a router. I just, some of these holes are where I just nailed in a, a, a strip of wood to use as a guideline. And then I used my router and cut all the way around it. And this makes a lovely edge uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, so what I did was I glued these pieces of wood together with wood glue and I put screws in them every six inches these ones to hold these screws are almost as long as this is and I, I put them there to um, to pull the, the pieces together as it dried sometimes what will happen is they'll warp when they get the wet of the glue on them so I wanted this to be a solid piece of wood so that's what I did when I was done with that I put the feet on which was a mistake and I'm gonna have to take them back off because I, I forgot I hadn't painted it um, so yeah, no big deal. Um, I put the feet on, even if I'm going to use some kind of vibration pads, uh, these are actually quite effective for vibration, but also just to keep the, bo the bottom of the wood off the table, because there are some things that I will do that put a bolt all the way through the table. Not in this build though. So that's that. Now there are two uh, components to a to a regular compact shooting table like this. We're not. This is not a cage. I think of this as being an outrigger system, kind of like a, a boat. It's going to have masts on it from which you can suspend your lighting. Masks with bendy arms on them, and that's the way uh, I've been doing this now for uh, several years. Um, I, uh, the cage is a brilliant way to go if you have the room and I haven't had the room, so I've, I've been using this other method. And I'm going to show you an interesting thing that I did to build the, the outriggers exactly the way I wanted them, because they don't make outriggers. For You can't go in and say, I need some bendy arm outriggers for my macro platform. The guy will call the cops on you. I've 
feel fairly sure around here. So what I did was first, when I had this piece of wood, was I marked the midline. The midline is important because everything has to point in a straight line down the midline if you're going to know that your camera is lined up properly. Okay, so that's don't skimp on this, measure it, measure it again, measure it from both edges. And when you're absolutely sure that you know where the line needs to go, draw it lightly and then measure it again. And if it's still, the line hasn't moved, do it heavier. You, I know you already know all that, but. The next thing I did was I started to plan my rig platform. I think that you should always have your, your uh, automated rail movable. I have to mount it in such a way that I can move it. The reason being, number one, I, I want to take it off and mount it vertically for one thing, but, but second and more important, you need to think as you're setting up your rail, what am I gonna use this for? You've, you may only have a 4X objective now, but you might have a 20X next year, or you might be switching to a, uh, you know, a, a two to one or a one to two macro lens that uh, you need a lot more length for. So think about that. I have ev everything that I could imagine shooting with. Uh, and if I don't have it one day, I probably will. And I need to be, flexible enough to move my camera wherever it needs to be. So what I do is I build a second platform that goes on the main platform, and that is this piece. Now, all this is is a, a piece of two-inch aluminum plate that I cut to the, the length of this piece of wood, which I cut to the length of the macro rail. And uh, I made sure the wood was nice and true. I, I, uh, I don't have a joint or a planer or anything, so I bought wood that was uh, uh, spec for cabinetry. So it was already, it was already flat. And um, yeah, all, I've, all I did was sand the edges so you wouldn't get splinters. And then very carefully marked the midline of this and uh, the midline of my piece of aluminum, which has got all the markings on the underside of this piece, but I've uh, double-sided taped it to this so it won't move uh, and all I have done is drilled three holes in the middle in the on the midline that is and then four pairs of holes down the edges now this is this is important this is what I'm going to do because I want to be able to move my rail I'm going to take three quick release clamps which are going to be screwed into place like so. To secure them, I take a, a bolt, it's one of these. I try to use the same size screws everywhere because they're common, the threads are common, and you probably have them lying around the house. It's a quarter, 20, quarter inch uh, screw uh, with 20 uh, teeth per inch. So what I do is I drill a slightly bigger hole on the underside of the board, opposite where the little one is. When I tighten the screw, it pulls the plate against the aluminum. Why am I using aluminum? Number one, so the plates don't bite into the wood and become uneven. But second, um, so that it raises the, the quick release plate just high enough that I can get to the knob. That is the, the base then. So all of this will be painted separately and then I'll assemble it all together. And how do I attach this to the midline? You're probably wondering, well, I use a different kind of screw. These will thread down into some holes I've already drilled. First of all, I marked them through my holes, then drilled a little hole as a pilot, and then these will screw down in there and it will hold my rail completely straight. Let's talk for a minute about my nipples. My lighting pylons are simply a rod, a metal rod that is fixed vertically and doesn't move, doesn't bend, wobble, or anything like that. And I found the best way to do it is with these nipples, they're called. Th these ones are half inch. Drill a hole that's a little bit smaller than this, and then I screw this into the wood. And you can get the first few turns in with your fingers, and then it's hopeless, and I have to use a big wrench thing. And I wrench them all the way down to the bottom, 
until the flange is against the wood. So you have to drill a pretty decent sized hole. It's key, when I get done with the painting, I'm gonna put a few drops of epoxy around the top of this and then screw this in and it will never move again, ever. What I did was I bought a, uh, a, a towel rail. I sawed it in half and then I cut threads in one end. I cut the threads into the metal rod so that it would screw directly into the brass fitting. And I use a pair of pliers and really crank it down there. And by the time that the whole thing is screwed into the, the wood, it doesn't move. I mean, you could, you could hang off it. it. It is not moving. And it is completely upright because I drilled the hole on a drill press. And what I do with this, of course, is just put a bendy arm and a super clamp on here and I can position my lights anywhere. And I have four holes, four nipples, but just two rods. So I can move them around depending on what I want to do. Very versatile. And I'm, I'm not stuck just with, with this. I can, I can use anything I want to cut a thread in, basically. And this is a common size. If you don't want to be cutting threads in, in the workshop, you can just buy something that's already got a thread on the end. They make conduit that's this size, but they were out of it everywhere I looked. That's all you need for the lighting. This is what it would look like. You will take your rail, instead of bolting this to the wood, which is what I've done on platforms in the past, the rail now threads onto these open quick release clamps. And because there's three of them, and because you measured multiple times, they are in a perfectly straight line. And they will hold, if this thing is on the midline, as it will be, they'll hold it straight, just the way you want it. All you have to do is loosen these and slide it off and you're good to go. But here's what I wanted to show you. When you've got your rig up here and you're photographing with a 20 times objective, you may well, it only takes two of these quick release clamps to support a wee macro. You may want it there so that your objective can be here and you have the room you need. But say you wanted to use a macro lens, which needs as much room as you can get, then you can take your rail and you can slide it on the back to and slide the rail off the back of the table and lock it in place. And uh, it gives you all the flexibility that you could need, more than most rigs are gonna give you. And then tighten it back down again and you're good to go. Now, what's going on up here? I change my rig all the time. This is my classic microscope objective uh, setup that uses the distances that Robert O'Toole described. Uh, so I, I use 245 millimeters to my relay lens, which is an ITL 200, which is in the adapter right here. And then another 75 on the front to my objective. And this is a very standard rig for me. That's why I built this, this second plate. And I'll show you what that is in just a minute. But I change this all the time. And I'll go to a short focus or I'll go to a different kind of lens altogether or different extension tubes or a different relay lens. And I have all those things, all those uh, different uh, systems already set up and, and ready to go. So I don't want to have to mess with breaking this apart, taking the ring clamps off and, and because these have to be aligned carefully. I'll show you how to put them on in a second. I don't want to have to mess with all of that. So what I do is I just loosen three quick release clamps. These are small quick release clamps. And then I can slide my rig off and all my rigs are on a, a plate like this. Just put a new plate, uh, put the plate with my new rig, slide it back on again, and I'm ready to start shooting. So that's, this is one of those things that I said may be a little bit more overkill than you're interested in, but this makes my life so much easier not to have to mess around with undoing ring clamps and what have you. I like, once you get this dialed in, it's best to leave it exactly the way it is. Um, let me show you very briefly. Uh, 
I did not use the Wii Macro adapter at the front. I honestly, I didn't like it. Um, it it uh, was a dead stop and um, it just, uh, I, I like the little bit of taper and it gave me the extra 10 millimeters I needed. So I just used three step down rings that end up at a 26, which is the thread size for a Mitsu Toyo. I ordered all this stuff and paid for this stuff from Wii Macro myself. And let me tell you something, I'm gonna sing their praises one time. And, uh, and if you don't believe me, ask Mike Canfer, uh, who placed the same order as I did for some stuff at the same time. I got my uh, stuff from China, from Wii Macro, in under a week. In fact, in under a business week, in under five days. Ordered it on Monday, and it was here on Friday morning. And I thought, that's a fluke. And I ordered a couple more ring clamps, and no, it was exactly the same five days. They do not mess around when you place an order. It's expensive. Their shipping and handling is 30 bucks, whether you buy one ring, ring clamp or the whole nine yards, but it was worth it. I got that so quickly and in great shape. As always, their packaging is as good as anybody's out there. It really is. So what I have here then is um, a bunch of uh, tubes. The long pieces are 50 millimeters and they're, they're flocked. These are Wii macro tubes and they already have the flocking in them, which is pretty slick and makes life easier. You still need to flock the bits that are exposed. This is uh, an ITL adapter, which is brand new for, for um, these guys. You had to normally, you had, you had to go buy these from uh, Thor Labs before and they're uh, twice this much or more. But this has the right thread size to mesh with these 42 millimeter tubes, as well as uh, the, the 37 millimeters, whatever it is on the inside that the ITL screws into, and it screws in firmly, and uh, it screws in in reverse too. It, it goes both ways, but you definitely want it in reverse. Because I needed a, an odd number of, uh, of millimeters separation from my sensor and I use a DSLR, I was left with needing some odd millimeters. So what I did was just so that, again, I could be more flexible, was I just got a helicoid, a short one. Camera goes on here. One thing I don't like about this rig, and I haven't figured out how I'm gonna fix it yet, is whenever you have a device that screws on as the thing that you're attaching your camera to, when you rotate the camera, it'll screw off. And that worries me um, uh, with the big heavy camera on there. There's a big wasp in my house. He's made a very poor choice of houses to visit. When you put this together, put your clamps, these are Niwa um, fishbone clamps or something like that, like that. So what I do is I clamp these to the rail that I'm gonna clamp my tubes to and I lay them on my piece of aluminum. This is a one and a half inch piece of aluminum. And I mark the aluminum through these with the, with the rail in place. See what I'm saying? So I know I've got the straight line that I need. And then uh, when I put these on the, the rail, again, they are attached to the rail without th this part on there. One of the ways that I have done this in the past is to attach the rings themselves to these so that instead of a rail underneath here, you would have a quick release clamp upside down clamped onto the rail. That is a legitimate way to do it. And if it wouldn't have put my whole rig a bit too high by adding another layer, I might have done that. That allows you to remove segments of the tube but seeing as I have I want to remove the whole thing and leave it on its rail because the one I'm replacing is already on its shorter rail then it's just easier for me to to make the the last QR clamps here um, if I was having to change parts of this all the time I might do it differently uh, because you don't want to be taking this tube. Once you get this thing aligned and straight, you do not want to be messing with these tightening rings. You don't want to be re 
mounting these uh, rings on the, the rail. I'm going to show you a, a, a useful piece of trivia, but it's not really trivia, it's very important. This is a standard rail, one of the, the cheap kind, that is so useful in, in macro photography for keeping things straight. I have used tripod screws, thumb screw things to hold this in place. That's fine. Anything you've got that's uh, short, and they, these have to be very short because you only have a, a few millimeters to work with in the ring. These are perfect. And they come on the QR clamps and you're not going to use them. So you might as well use them for this. Um, what you need to do is be aware that there is a way you can straighten your rig once it's on here. You probably would think, well, it's going to be straight because it can only be screwed into this groove. Well, not so. The, the end positions at the end of the groove actually are horizontal. They're very short, but you can actually move the screw left and right about two or three millimeters. It's so that you can straighten things out if they're not. So once you get this thing on, you, you want to look down the edges of each of the landmarks and make sure that none of the, the rings are rotated. There's a groove or a separation in the C-clamp uh, all the way uh, in a line, and they should be in a perfect line. It should be like Star Wars. You're looking right down that, that thingy-majig at the end. So make sure they're straight and then tighten them very gradually, one at a time and only tighten them to the point that the tubes don't turn. Don't crush it, don't overdo it. Um, you will re-tighten them before you mount this thing in a vertical orientation, I promise you. But uh, that, that's, that's for another day because that involves a couple of changes that I want to talk to you about. So I built this, which consists of a thick one inch piece of aluminum that's twice as thick as the top to, to make us a, a stable base here. And then a longer but still very sturdy uh, piece of one and a half inch thick. And then to this, I, I threaded the holes on either end so that the, the clamps would screw on firmly. And then the nuts are just a kind of extra precaution just uh, to, to stop them from, from coming off. You'll see what I mean. So the nut is, is just there to give me added security, but I still have to unscrew the clamp because it's threaded right through the metal. So again, overkill. You probably don't need to, to go to all that amount of trouble, but that's what it looks like. So this is really, just a whole a piece of metal with five holes in it, and then on the bottom a piece with three holes in it that all line up. I had these all taped together when I was drilling the holes. So let me show you how I put it back on again. Um, because the holes were drilled at the same time while it was uh, taped together, they are in alignment, and just by putting the bolts back in, it'll re-straighten it. Okay, so this piece, is bolted with two bolts that I measured for the two threaded holes on the top of the Wii Macro. There are two quarter 20s. Double check, double check that your screw's actually gonna go into them and that they are quarter 20s, like so. So these will bolt onto to the top, though I didn't use the right bolt. Because there's nothing in the way of this, I just use a round head bolt, like so. So that goes through there and it screws into the top, holds this. I'm painting this black, which is why I'm not putting it back on. Like so, holds it flat and, and firm so that it can't twist with these two bolts. Then I attach these two and we're good to go. The total height of the whole thing comes to 17 and one half centimeters to the optical center of the rig. In other words, when the whole thing is, is mounted, this, the center, is 17 and a half centimeters above the surface of the wood. Rather than build something which I knew I would have to change, modify, move, I used the Wii Macro vertical base, which I also 
got for using as a vertical base. And after I measured it, I discovered that I could mount this onto the platform about here. And I'll explain what this is in a second. And my XYZR table brought it up to about a centimeter short of the, the height that I needed. And that centimeter that, that I'm short is exactly what I need for my pin. That's how much clearance I like. So this is 16 and a half uh, centimeters to here, leaves me an extra centimeter to the optical center, which is going to be right about there. So I'm not going to need a lab lifter because I'll get all the, the elevation I need from my XYZR. Now, I have secured this to the table or to the to the plate. This is a, a new port. It, it's an, it's a, a, a single axis back and forth. I only need a couple of axes um, and this is a lovely table, it's very accurate. So I use this from side to side and it is bolted in with one quarter 20 and a big washer right through the middle. And that's just so that it doesn't shift. These rubber feet are on here temporarily. I am gonna take them off and I am going to drill four holes right through this table. And I've got four big bolts, the same size as these, only this long. And I am going to mount them to the underside of the table so that by turning a, a thumb screw, I can raise each of the, the four corners of this if I did need to get it a little bit higher. For example, if I put the bellows on here, then I would need it higher. So I'm thinking ahead to making this thing vertically adjustable more than I get with just this thing here. Now, this on this beautiful rail is light on ice. I mean, there is no friction between the two. How am I gonna secure it in place? Well, the problem is this has holes for tiny little M4 screws. That's an M4 screw right there. And these holes, that's the this is the largest screw they will take and, and fit down into the recesses that they're supposed to, like so. And that is not enough of a screw to screw into these enormous quarter 20 holes. How do I know they're quarter 20? Well, I checked it. We know they're quarter 20s and we have much smaller screws. This is a trick, I've, sh I've shown this before and I'm gonna show it again uh, so that I don't have to go find out which video it was in before, um, but it involves using a piece of wire and I've taken all the guesswork out. If you have a, uh, a four millimeter anchor screw that holds it to whatever base you are using, if you are trying to secure it to anything that has a quarter 20 thread, you need to do this trick. The only wire that you need is any piece of soft steel uh, wire in 21 gauge. 21 AWG. You don't need much, just a, a short piece. You need a clean end on this wire. So use, use wire snips when you're doing this. Uh, what I do is I put one end in a drill, I grab the other end with some good pliers and I fire the drill a few times. The wire will end up being perfectly straight. Don't overdo it or it'll break. You want it perfectly straight. Then take one of your quarter, uh, one of your M4 screws and very carefully leave about an inch extra sticking over the edge. Wrap your wire tightly and I mean hugging the individual grooves on the screw all the way around all the way to the end. Basically you're making a, a copy of the thread design of the little screw. When you get done, go one extra bit, half, quarter of a turn beyond the end of the screw, and then just unscrew the screw out of your coil. Take your wire snippers and snip the long end off 
after bending it across the opening just a tiny bit so that it's out of the way. Snip it off at the base and then screw it into one of the quarter 20 holes. It'll screw in because it's just the right size. This is as big a discrepancy as I would ever try to fix with one of these little tricks. Any bigger than this, and I would never suspend anything from this. I would never hang my camera from this. Screw this thing in as best you can until it's almost flush. Then take your, your uh, XYZR or whatever you're putting on, drop your screw in there, position it over the hole. So as you screw this thing in, it'll go too easily at first. You'll feel it catch at the, at the end as, it, as the threads of the little screw catch into the uh, piece of wire that's in the hole. Now I'm gonna unscrew it so that I can trim that wire so that it'll go down flush, but that is, that is how you do it. It's really straightforward. And if you cut this all the way like that, this will then push the rest of the way in and it will, will go completely flush. There you go. And that is, is not going anywhere, believe me. When you want to take it out, unscrew it. Um, and uh, the, the little worm will back out just like a screw. That's it, that's all I'm saying about this, this rig. There you have the horizontal rig and I will be starting my uh, tests in earnest um, this weekend with that completed. The next time you see this, which will be on Tuesday at 8 p.m., right, you'll be there. Uh, that will be to um, uh, show you the, the progress that I've made and it'll be painted then. So in fact, the whole thing will be, it might even be taking pictures uh, while we're doing the live stream. Who knows? I'll have it all set up on my desk, ready to go. Uh, so that'll be fantastic. Um, if you want more macro, if you just don't get enough in your life right now, join Patreon. I have a Patreon site where people um, go to support my work, but I re recognize that some people don't like that. They don't want to, to go to Patreon and they don't want to have a bill um, that come in the mail. And you know what? I understand that. I don't either. Uh, but there is a piece of equipment that I am trying to purchase for the live stream that you're coming to on Tuesday. It's, a, it's called a switcher. And what it does is it changes, it, it allows me to, instead of using one camera, it allows me to use three or four cameras and get different angles and I can switch back and forth so that I can, for example, share my screen, show pictures, uh, to show you through the microscope, show you through my camera on the rail, all of these things that I can't do now because I don't have a, but a single HDMI input, so that has to be the camera that I'm shooting with, or the, the webcam. Um, so this would just be a wonderful step up for the, for, the, uh, for the channel and for the live stream in particular. The thing I'm looking at is by Black Magic. It's a Black Magic. <laughs> It's a black magic something or other. Is it any wonder when I, this is the best I can do at begging is uh, to forget what I'm begging for. It's a black magic something something switcher and it's the, the entry level one and uh, it's $329, that much I know. I would be so grateful if, if anybody who's just sick of money and, and would like to get rid of some of it and, and enjoy the freedom from all that anxiety, if, if you wouldn't mind sending me just a little bit of it, uh, I'd be most grateful so that I can get this thing uh, and get on with uh, up in the, the game on the, the uh, live stream. Nobody likes the, the amateur hour thing of struggling all the time, but uh, yeah. Uh, so I need your help, and if, if, you, if you don't mind, I'd be most grateful. Uh, otherwise, I'd, I'm still grateful. I've got the best job in the world. Who wouldn't be grateful for that? That's it. Enjoy this picture. It's one of mine. Good night. Take care.